MachineTutorials.com Yo, what's good? This is St. Joe with MachineTutorials.com Here with a video to show you how the complete keyboard controllers integrate with Machine in the new 2.2 update. So for those of you that have one of these controllers and you want to know what you can do with it with Machine or if you're just kind of curious and you want to see how it's integrated, what you can and can't do, I wanted to show it. So first thing is you can go in and set up your preferences. So if we go to preferences and hardware, you can see complete control and then you got some options for your velocity scaling. You can turn the light guide on and off if you want. You can adjust the pitch strip. The modulation, you can have it standard, which you know is normal mode, or you can put it in uh, ball mode, which kind of gives it a little bit of movement. So kind of moves around and some different things you can do with that. So that's a cool way to modulate things. Then you can turn the touch sensitive knobs on or off and transport control. So you do get transport control of machine from these keyboards. So let's close it out. Now, first thing you're probably going to do is you're going to want to browse. So all you got to do is press browse. If you don't have anything loaded, you just press browse and the browser comes up. So for me, when I first got this, not being able to see anything on the controller was kind of a letdown just because I'm used to machine and normally I have this stuff off to the side like machine was off to the side I had the keyboard off to the side so I wasn't directly looking at the screen but once I moved it and put it in front of my screen it became more useful just because you know I'm directly looking at the sounds and the browser and different things like that so anyway you get all your stuff at the top and you can browse through your different categories if you want to get into your user stuff you just go over here and now you can choose which one you want to be in so we'll just choose that and go back and let's say we want to choose an instrument you can either enter or press the knob and now you can go through all instruments or just individual um, instruments we can just go through all if we want to go down to the next level maybe we want to go find a pad so we'll say pad and we'll say basic pad so you know the browser pretty much looks like the complete control software if you've seen any videos on that that's what the browser looks like and again we can just go in and find something maybe uh, let's maybe that one so it's loaded and of course you got control over your parameters which is what I like because I like when I'm playing be able to tweak sounds like if I'm doing samples and drums I like to do that on the machine but I don't like tweaking sounds when I'm playing from the keys and reaching over to the machine so that's definitely a benefit of that but if you want to go through your different parameter pages use these page buttons here so you know a lot of stuff is is pretty straightforward if you want to go up and down in your sounds you see right here you can switch pads and if you want to switch presets which is another cool thing that I like is you can just go, go up and down right there all that stuff and of course you still have your performance stuff so if you want to turn on the ARP if you want to edit it you shift and press ARP You got that and you can turn that on and off there um, scales you can still turn your scales on so you can see right here and if you want to go in and edit that you can shift edit and now you can go into your scales and you can change it so you can see it lights up can't play nothing outside of the scale you could change your key modes from easy to easy or standard and you see there's nothing on the black keys in easy mode so all your scale is on the white keys you can turn chord mode on and off 
It's the same same functions as if you were doing this from a machine, but you can just do it from a controller. So you got all that stuff and like I said, really straightforward. And if you want, you can record from here. So what I, I do like the transport on the keyboard just because, again, sometimes you come up with an idea and you want to quickly go into record mode. There's no way to set, you know, pattern links and anything like that from the keyboard. So it's kind of an extension of machine. You can't do everything from the keyboard, but it, it does help. It does add some things, especially if you like to play a lot of keys and, you know, mess with different instruments and stuff like that. It's definitely something useful. Um, there's definitely some things I wish it had and wish it did a little bit better or different, but anyway, I just want to show you how it integrates. So let's say we want to start something. Turn that off. We're going to turn scale mode off. And let's maybe find something different. And there's no tap tempo on here, so that's one thing I miss. If you're just starting something, you sometimes want to use tap tempo. I know that's pretty much how I usually start everything. But anyway, you got your transport, so you got play, record, stop, and then, of course, shift and play is restart. Shift and record is count in. If you want to turn the metronome on or off, shift and stop, and then you got rewind, fast forward, and loop. I'll show you how to do loop mode in a minute. So let's say we just want to start a basic pattern. I can do shift, record. Now we got that in there. One thing I also wish we could kind of do some navigational things like zooming in and out directly from here, but because you guys know I don't like seeing my pattern off the screen. But anyway, there it is right there. So we got that. Now you also have some things like you know fast forward, rewind. So if you just press these as they are, it's going to move based on your pattern grid. But if you do a shift, it's going to move based on your step grid. Same with the loop. So if you shift, loop, then now you use these buttons over here. You can adjust the front, or you can adjust the back. And let's say you want to move the entire loop range. So let's say we have it like that. If we just do shift and loop, I can move it there. Or if I want to do everything, a shift loop will highlight all your scenes. So it's really quick to set up loop mode and different things like that. Of course, this right here is going to move your cursor within your project. Again, if you just move it with no modification, it's going to move based on your pattern grid. If you move it with the shift, it's going to move based on your step grid. So some straightforward stuff there. Also some other navigational things. If you want to go up and down inside of your group, just use these page buttons here. And if you want to go to a new group or a different group, shift up and down will let you change between your groups. Now we have nothing, so this will let me go and find something now. I can just go back to go all the way to the top, or if I do a shift back, it's going to clear any other parameters I had and take me to the top. So there's different ways. If you just want to go to the top but leave your, you know, your types and everything chosen, just press back. If you want to clear everything, you do a shift and back. So now I have nothing chosen, and again, I can go in. Maybe we want to go into instruments. I can go into the individual instruments, or I can just go find what I want, maybe instruments and uh, base and maybe I want sub and now I can just go through all of my sub bases maybe I'll pull up something like that and you're pretty much ready to go now another thing that you can do is turn on auto write so let's go back up to that um, go back up here and let's say I want to automate some stuff inside of here so we got it playing and I was like, you know, I want to kind of automate my filter cutoff or something like that. You can do it quickly. Just shift and press these two buttons right here, your page left and right. It'll say auto on. Now, the thing about auto write from the keyboard is it's a toggle all the time. So it's going to be on until you turn it off. So just don't forget to turn it off. And otherwise, you'll be automating stuff that you don't want to automate. So right now it's on. As long as the sequencer is playing, I can automate stuff. So we'll just go back.
So again, you know, straightforward stuff. Just wanted to show you some of the ways that it integrates and make sure you understand how it moves around, how you can do different things. Like I said, you got your navigation here. If you're using these together inside of a DAW, like if you use a machine and you're also using the complete control software, you could switch between instances. Or even if you just use a machine and you're not using the complete control, you could still switch between instances. So you press instance, it'll show you whatever you got loaded, you know, in machine or complete control or whatever, and you can pick those that way. So again, the browsing really straightforward you know press browse if you want to go back you can go here and let's say if I want to take the sub off I can just hit enter and now I, I get rid of that if I want to get rid of this I can hit enter or you can do a shift and press the knob another way to get rid of it so there's multiple ways to do different things like I said you can't start patterns or anything from this controller so there's definitely a lot of stuff that I wish it had and which it did of course this isn't a review this is really just me trying to show you how this thing integrates with the machine so if you're curious about it hopefully this kind of sheds some light on the different things you can do with the controller um, from this keyboard and if you have it hopefully it kind of helps you understand like I said for me once I moved it in front of my screen and kind of front and center it made a lot more sense to me as opposed to having it off to the side just because I didn't like having to turn my neck back around to kind of look at the browser but if it's right here in front of me I find myself using it that way and even though you know I'm normally one that uses a lot more keys I find this kind of like an accessory because I can use it for controlling and tweaking sounds and kind of finding stuff and browsing different things like that and then I have my larger keyboard under on my tray so I can do you know a little two hand thing and kind of play on my larger keys and use different things here got my transport and all that stuff and another thing I find a use for is you know having a smaller one with a larger regular keyboard I can go in and maybe if I'm using like a contact instrument that has some key switches I can octave down and just have my key switches dedicated here and then have all my keys on the bottom and another thing to note is when you're using this inside a machine well let me just show you so let's say we um, just get out of here and what I'm gonna do is go here so we got that let me turn on my other keyboard so now I mean I know you can't see my other keyboard but let's say if I go in here and go to edit mode so I got my chords but now I can play chords from my external controller because I turn it on from this keyboard so now I can turn it I can play it from my external MIDI controller and it will of course let me show you you can actually see it's actually playing the notes so that's another benefit if you have the complete controller, even if you have the smaller one and you have a larger controller that you like to use, um, you could turn it on directly there and do that. So again, hopefully this just kind of showed you how things integrate and different ways I'm using it, different ways I have it in my setup. But mainly I just want to show you how the complete controllers integrate inside the Machine 2.2 update. So as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. This is St. Joe, MachineTutorials.com, showing you how to use that complete controller inside of the Machine 2.2 software. I'll see y'all later. Peace.